Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Republican strategist and former state communications director for House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Brittany Martinez. Brittany, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me back. What an exciting night it is, election night. And I want to I want to timestamp where we are right now. It is exactly 930. Yeah. Polls are closing yes. across the country. We're getting a better understanding of um, of what is happening exactly as votes are being tallied. And I want to talk to you about that because as we sit here right now, obviously, as we know, things can change on a dime. But the AP has Donald Trump with 178 electoral votes opposed to Harris's 99. So as a Republican right now, how are you feeling? You know what, it's still, I hate to be that person. I feel like you're gonna get that all night. It's still so early to call. And I am a Republican, but I'm a Republican who isn't super supportive of the former president. So when I see that disparity in this moment, um, I also know we have the state of California, which is obviously gonna go blue. And I believe that is 54 electoral votes and that gets her a lot closer, right? And those numbers seem so stark in contrast, but in reality, um, it's the seven swing states that are really, we're gonna really be focusing on, plus Nebraska too, that's really going to be the deciding factor of this election. So one way or another, people might be freaking out or they might be excited, but uh, you know, it's gonna be over the next few hours as those additional votes come in, especially from the swing states that we're able to de determine where this election is gonna go. I wanted to talk about that because obviously it's coming down to those swing states and there have been no surprises as of right now as the results are coming in. Some Democrats who were reaching out to me were sweating, seeing that electoral vote disparity, but I was speaking to a pollster earlier and he was telling me about the red mirage. Do you think that's what we're seeing right now? as a Republican who was promised a red wave in 2022 and we didn't get it. Yeah, I am always really hesitant when it comes to those sorts of things. Right now, you know, people are projecting that we're going to win the Senate um, and flip it. And there, I saw something that was projecting that Republic, Republicans are going to keep the House. I'm not so sure about that. I do think that we're going to win the Senate. I think the House is going to be super tight and who knows where the presidential is going to go. But I think we can't look at this through our red, rosy red colored glasses um, because we have been projecting wrong <laughs> in the last few cycles. Um, so I think cautious optimism is always the case that we need to be following here. That's what everyone, every campaign is gonna tell you on election day. Um, but I, I don't think it's time to uh, pop the champagne yet, if, so to speak. So you're cautiously optimistic is what you're saying, but obviously this comes down to those battleground states and none of those results are fully in yet. None of those states as of now have been called but everyone wants to read the tea leaves, look at different counties, see if they can see any indicators, any foreshadowing. Are you seeing any foreshadowing that's leaving you with some pause or leaving you even more optimistic? <laughs> the both, which is also like the worst answer ever. So when I look at Pennsylvania and for example, people have been projecting that Harris really needed Pennsylvania in order to win. Obviously those results aren't in yet, but they're looking in her favor. And it's, are the, you know, are we only getting about, I think like 20% of the polls right now? Yeah, but it looks good. Also though, Democrats votes are usually earlier and come in at the beginning and look good. And then the Republican, I don't know how that works out, but that's just how it works out. The Democrat votes are usually the early votes. Um, then also when you look at North Carolina, for example, it's already been called for the Democrat governor, but uh, Trump is leading in the polls. Still hasn't they still haven't called that race? Um, but we're probably going to see some split tickets around the country as well, and um, that's going to continue to happen. So I wish I had a crystal ball, but right now I think everyone's trying to be cautious in the way they talk about it too, because they don't want to be wrong tomorrow. I think everyone wishes they had a crystal ball right now. But what is the mood like in the GOP? What are other Republicans feeling? Are they feeling this cautious optimism? Walk us through that. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm checking Twitter and social media and sort of seeing what folks are saying from all across the board. Um, and, and they do seem to be somewhat excited, I think, and, and trying to toe that line carefully, right? Because you don't want to embarrass yourself and, and 
celebrate too early, but I think that there are a lot of Republicans out there who are projecting that um, optimism and that confidence. However, I will say that earlier today, there were some signals that suggested otherwise, even from Trump himself, when he was tweeting out, you know, in all caps per usual, um, in Pennsylvania, there is already fraud, or in, in Detroit, be careful because the cops are around. And I, I Like, what, what are you saying? To me, that indicates that he wasn't totally confident in what the what their internals were saying, um, especially in Pennsylvania. And so I, I don't know how they're feeling, but uh, that signals to me that maybe they aren't as cautiously optimistic. I want to know what you're feeling and how it compares to 2016 and 2020, because obviously 2016, Hillary Clinton was uh, um, winning in the polls. That was an upset for her. She won the popular vote. She obviously didn't win the election. 2020, Biden won. So as a Republican, those are two separate feelings. So are you feeling more as of now that you were back in 2016 or more of 2020? You know what? I was wrong both of those years. I thought Hillary was going to win and she lost. I thought Trump was going to win and he lost. So I don't know that... uh, I'm the best guesser, to be honest, of, of the presidential election. Um, but I, I, I still think it's it's too close too close to tell. I don't know, and I, I have my thoughts, but given my track record, I don't know if I want to breathe that into existence. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I do think though that the blue wall usually is a big indicator of who's going to win, and we call it the blue wall because Democrats, I think, have traditionally won for a long time, except Trump. Um, you know, just like during some of those cycles in 2016, I believe. So I I think where the blue wall goes, um, the rest of the electorate will follow. Donald Trump, as we know, outperformed the polls twice. But now, as we sit here in 2024, every pollster I talked to, every national poll said, this race is a toss-up. It is too close to call. Now we're in the midst of election night. Do you agree? Do you still think that that race is too close to call? I do think it is. I also do think that us working in politics are, have, happen to be a little bit dramatic. Um, and every race is too close to call and everything is the biggest election that we've ever seen. Um, but all signs are indicating that this is the case this time around. And it was the case when Biden was in too. Um, so yes, I do think that it's still too close to call. I don't know that we'll have the results tonight. I do think regardless of what the results are by the end of this evening, that Trump is going to say that he is the winner, um, even if that is not accurate, which I don't think it will be accurate because I don't think we'll have all of those swing state results fully in yet. Do you think if he does that, do you think if he declares a premature victory that Republicans will coalesce behind him once again? I do think so. And I don't think that's healthy. We need to allow our democracy and our election process to take shape and it, in its full form. Um, and I don't think it is helpful to take that prev- to the premature step of saying that, especially given January 6th and everything that happened with the last election and him still touting the lie that it was stolen. Uh, so I think that is helpful for no one. And I'm in Washington, D.C. right now, so I do not look forward to any chaos that follows should he, you know, declare victory prematurely. Of course, and hopefully, obviously, we all can hope that it's a peaceful transfer of power. It's a peaceful night. It's a peaceful January 20th. But what tonight are you specifically watching out for next? Because as of now, there haven't been surprises, but none of those swing states have been called yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The swing states, I mean, that's what I'm most interested in. I know I keep saying Pennsylvania, but Pennsylvania, it's the swing state with the the most electorate, uh, electoral college um votes. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens with Nebraska, too. I'm interested to see what happens in Arizona, especially with the Senate race. I think Democrats are going to take it. But who knows what will happen if Trump wins, what that down ballot is going to look like. Um, And I'm also I know we're talking about the presidential here, but I'm really interested to see what happens in Congress if Republicans are able to maintain the House and if we are able to flip the Senate. I think it's going to be I wouldn't be I would be very surprised if uh, we kept the House. I wouldn't be surprised if we flipped the Senate. And, you know, on. I think I would be a little surprised, to be honest with you, if Trump is able to pull this off again, but I wouldn't be the first time I was wrong. What down ballot race are you looking for? What Senate race are you keeping your eye out on the most? 
I'm definitely paying attention to Ohio. We have Sherrod Brown, who's been a senator for about three decades. He's against Bernie Moreno. Um, right now, Trump seems to be leading in the polls there. And Sherrod Brown was leading up until recently. Now, uh, Moreno seems to be up a few points, but all the, you know, it's not fully in yet. I think the last time I looked, it was about 50%, uh, which is a good amount. But again, you know, 50, we're still waiting for half of the votes to come in. So that one's really interesting um, to me. I think that's probably the one that I'm keeping an eye on. On the most especially because I, I worked on the last Senate campaign in Ohio in 2018 so I'm very curious to see how that goes Brittany I'm curious because you said it's going to be a late night but when what result are you going to see that you're going to be like okay you know I can go to bed now what does that look <laughs> like for you what's that final result that you're gonna pack it in after that Never. <laughs> That's what the red bull is for. Uh, I'm really curious to see where the red wall, or excuse me, the blue wall, maybe it'll be a red wall, um, what happens with Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Also North, North Carolina, I think Georgia... I think that's going for Trump. North Carolina right now, it's pretty, you know, it seems to still be pretty close. Trump is in the lead, um, but perhaps there's an upset there, especially because uh, the gubernatorial race is already gone for the Democrats. So I think that would be really interesting. I don't know if that would be like the surprise, but that would be a little bit of a surprise for me um, if, if it does go for Harris. So I think maybe that, I think the blue wall is going to be a blue wall. North Carolina is the one that I um, am most interested to see where that goes. Well, there is certainly a lot to look out for. And as we get more results in later in the week, I hope you come back on and break them down with me when we have a clearer picture. Brittany Martinez, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me back.